Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a look at calculating the energy in the pendulum. So we're going to assume that we push a pendulum over to one direction and then we'll let go. So we start with an initial angle. Our angular frequency is still going to be the square root of g over l. And we're going to let theta equals theta initial. We're going to start at this position when time equals zero. So we need the cosine function to describe that motion because when t equals zero, the cosine of zero is one, and so the angle will be at the initial angle. Of course, omega will be the square root of the g over l, so we can write it like this, and then if we take the derivative of that, we end up with this expression right here. Why do we take the derivative? Because one expressed the velocity in terms of the length times d theta dt, and of course, d, d theta dt is what we calculated over here, and now we have an expression for the velocity. Now, if we want to have the absolute value of the velocity, we can then take the square root. We can then uh, square this, write as 1 minus the cosine squared, and take the square root of that, so I have this as a positive value. And then we can finally solve for the velocity in terms of this. So we don't quite need that as often, uh, but that's one way we, we can express the velocity. And then we can see that the total energy will be the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. The potential energy will always be equal to this and the kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv squared. We take this and we square it, we end up with this expression right here. So that's the expression for the energy of a pendulum. Or we can also say that the initial energy of a pendulum is the sum of the potential and kinetic energy. The potential energy will always, oh, the initial energy will always be this, with the initial angle. The potential energy will always be this, where the angle is a function of time and then plus one half mv squared. And of course, since we have an expression for v right here, we can plug that in here with a little manipulation, and we can see that the velocity, the absolute value of the velocity, because you have both sides of the swing, is going to be equal to the square root of the 2gl times the cosine of theta minus the cosine of theta sub naught, where that's initial angle, and that's the angle at any point in the swing. And that's how we can take a look at the energy of the pendulum, and from that derive the equation for the velocity as well. So now we have two equations for the velocity and two equations for the energy of a pendulum. And that is how it's done.